Hey, hey. We are back, we are back in, in the, the building. building. Welcome to Shift Real Talk Tuesdays. I'm your girl, Lady Free. And I'm your boy, like no other, Pastor J. Like no other. Listen. There's only one. There's only one. This episode tonight mm -hmm. is a saga that continues from our last guest, um, Barry Austin. He has an amazing story, and you do not want to miss it. I mean, imagine being incarcerated 15, well, being sentenced to 15 years in prison, having all the time in the world. I think it was imagine, 22. No, he was sentenced to 15, but he had to do more. Okay. But he was okay. sentenced to 15. I didn't know the exact number, but thank you. However, coming into a point where you imagining getting out. I mean, all the time in the world to sit there and imagine what it's going to be like to get out only for that day to come. Now you outside. Barry Austin is going to help us to understand what people really go through. Because do we really understand what they go through? We're just glad that they're out. But they really go through a lot of different things that we have no clue about. And today, he's going to give us, like a, I guess, a bird's eye view into the hearts of those who have made it home. So tonight's episode is entitled, I'm Outside. This is Life After Lockup. Welcome tonight, Barry Austin. Hello, Barry. The, the 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 king. <laughs> Welcome back, man. We, Welcome back. As, as he said earlier, the saga continues, it continues. and saga. and we had to bring you back, man, because uh, when we had you on the first time, we really honestly didn't cover everything that we tried to cover man. in one episode. Right. So we felt we felt in indebted to the people who were asked, still asking questions yeah. afterwards you know what i'm saying so so man we thank you for coming back on man thank you for having me thank you for coming back on man this is a pleasure this is a yes. pleasure to bring you back on the show listen man you know just this kind of kind of brief us you know from from the last episode man and let's and, and let's let's get let's let's have this shift real talk uh, from the last episode, it was tremendous when I tell you uh, the outpouring, the response. Um, it was crazy. The followers, you know, on social media, just, you know, the encouraging words just were like really dope. Um, and just like people wanted to know, you know, what else happened. They, they know there was more to the story. So right. it was just like, it's just really dope, you know. Yeah. Okay. That's so good. tonight's episode is I'm Outside. This is really, you know how they have the, the episode of the show talk called Love After Lockup. Love but this is lockup. life after lockup. <laughs> you really have like the meat of this story. So we're gonna let you well, well, well yeah, well well I wanna kinda like start it off okay. um because here you here you were. You were, you know, behind the prison walls for a long period of time, and I'm sure <laughs> When Long you time. got to, like, now that my day is coming up, man, you know, hey, how you doing, uh, Adrian? Hey, what's so, up, Adrian? So, 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 so we get to the point now where you're getting excited, like, I'm about to get out. <sighs> oh, man, this is, you know, the days are coming, and I'm sure you was anticipating getting out. Come on, what was that like? So now, in the anticipation of getting out, and then when you get out, how was that? How, how what, what was that like? I mean, how was that feeling for you? You know, how you doing, Maritza? Um, it was crazy when I when I made my eighth parole board, when I got the decision. It was like surreal because again, like I said last time I was on, I you know being sentenced to fifteen, you know, um, end up doing twenty two and nine. I never thought when I was sentenced that I would ever see the outside of you know prison bars again. Wow. wow. So. Um, getting that it was just like it was crazy it was like crazy surreal even though i don't think it really set in until the morning that i left that i was to leave because you know anything can happen you know what mm -hmm. i mean wow. um you wake up they in the can morning, change their mind yeah. it's not even that they can change their mind something can happen you know a riot could break out you know what i'm saying whatever you know things just happen wow. so i don't i don't think it really hit me until uh that morning and when i put on civilian clothes to walk out that gate so yeah wow, wow okay. so so did, coming out did you feel like did you feel like you missed so much no no finally when i'm getting out you know because it's like you was gone for a while so coming out did you feel like you missed anything or was it different like how what was that feeling when you finally got out good evening crystal crystal let me just hey, let me say this 
I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that I had missed a lot or that the world had changed. Right. Um, it, it did because the world because I went in in 1991 and I came out in 2014. Oh my so, god! Yeah. Totally different, different, different world. So oh um, it hit me. It hit me hard. You know, um, it was crazy. Like. 1991, 2014, when I tell you, it was, it was shocking to see stuff that I see on the street, just everything. It was, it was a whole new world. I just, and in my mind, nobody prepared me for it when I stepped out. So I'm just thinking that everything was going to fall into place. Like there'll be no problem me finding, you know, a place to stay. There'll be no problem finding a job, making money. I yeah. just, you know, in my mind, I had painted this perfect, you know, um, that it was just going, it was just going to happen. I was going to step out. It was just going to be on and popping. That was not the case. That was not the case. Do you, you know, not. you know what, you know what, man, wow. that's why I, so, I believe it's so important to really know God because the point, you know, like I know a lot of people who went through what you went through and come out and, and when they come out, they expect this. Okay. Well now I can kind of hit the ground running, you know what I'm saying? Especially after, you know, just having time to think and having time to reflect. And then mm -hmm. in that reflection time, I'm sure that's a time like, okay, of motivation. You know, I'm going to do some things different. But when you come outside and your expectation that you done built up in the inside, it doesn't match up with the responses of what's going on on the outside. Right. Come on here. What? Okay, so, <laughs> so, so that's my thing. I remember asking you one time, okay, so I love the movie Life with Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy. So my I was asking There's a you, question. When you got out, was it like that? Like how when Martin was driving the car and he finally was able to see now all the things that were, was it like that at all when you got out? To a degree, I'm going to tell you when it hit me. So a friend okay. of mine, my Tanya Houston, she picked me up right. and, you know, we're driving, you know, we upstate and somehow when we got into the city, you know, we was coming to Queens and somehow she made a wrong turn and we ended up in Harlem. And yo, we got home and I'm looking around and I'm seeing Harlem. I'm seeing Black Books 125th. I lost it. I lost it. Wow. Like the dam broke. I was uncontrollable. I had, she had to pull the car over and I just had to get out for a minute. And just like, I was just looking around, you know, just bawling, just like, wow. yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Totally so, different. So we got a question. We have here. a question from Marissa. She says, are you not supposed to tell your inmates when you get home or is that something you have to keep a secret? I mean, a lot of times people keep it a secret because you have people in there that never see the light of day. So a lot of times, unfortunately, they hate on individuals that's going home. Right. So they, you know, they'll do things to try to prevent you from going home and stuff like that. You know, it was very different with me because the love that I had, right. you know, amongst the masses, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, the first, I think it was my second parole board in Hudson. Yo, the brothers went on the fast with me. Like they turned down their plate and it, it I, even though I was hurt, I was more hurt for them because they was praying and fasting, believing God for my release, and it didn't happen. Wow. Wow. They was turning yeah. down food. They was turning prison. down food. They, yes. They, Let me tell I you tell something, them. dude. Are you a golden child? That's what <laughs> I want to know because this, these are things that we've never, ever heard before. Inmates turning their plates down so that you can get out. So here you are. You outside. Okay, before we go forward, though, I have a question for Andre. You know what? We have a lot of people asking questions, so this episode might be one of those. Listen, so Andre let's get it. says, okay, let's get it. Andre said, what was the first thing you did when you got out? The first thing I did when I, so I told you my friend picked me up. Right. So uh, after we made the detour, I asked him the detour in Harlem, we had to go to Queens because I had to report to parole that day. Um, I had to report to report parole. So yeah. after I put reports of parole um, in Queens, I went to Metro PCS and I brought a phone. I think it was VIMs. I went and brought a couple of items and then I hopped on the train because I had to go and check into the shelter. Wow. Check into a shelter. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, and that's, that's the part that I think that a lot of times we miss. People that have been out here this whole time. I think that's some of the stuff that we truly do miss because you getting out of prison and you going into a shelter. A shelter. I'm sure that was nowhere near what your opti the optimism <laughs> of your thoughts when you were in there 
Okay, because all we think about is, okay, he's out. But once you get out, that's when life really starts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And again, I wasn't, I, we wasn't prepared for this. We wasn't, you know, there was nothing, you know, they give us an ID that you can't do nothing with. I mean, you know how many times I went to the DMV before I got a woman, an older woman who was just like, how, how many years you didn't? I told her because they kept turning me down. They wouldn't accept my ID to get an official ID, a non-driver's wow. You know, I couldn't even go to Western Union and get money, use that ID to get money from that my family would send me from, you know, different states and stuff like that. For it was, They set you up to fail. So it was just like, everything was just like complete havoc. Wow. So, okay, so Andre, um, we appreciate oh, you wow. so much, sir, because in, in all of those, Lisa, who's on the line, Marie Ray, who's on the line, thank you guys for coming in. Um, we have David on the line. We have um, Adrian on the line, um, Yolanda, Yvonne, um, if I missed anybody, Dawn, we thank y'all, Sam Samara, for, um, Samara. Samara for coming on. We have a question, um, Andre said, basically, um, she said, wait, here's one, and the shelters back then were not like they are today. I don't uh, know how they are today. How are they today, uh, Maritza? Are they worse than they were back then? I probably I think, think they're a little more saying. tame. Though. Barry's in yeah. uh, Brooklyn, Marie. No, I was, no, see, I was, my first night, I had to stay in Manhattan at uh, Bellevue's Men's Shelter. Lo and behold, I didn't lay down. I didn't get a wink of sleep. I was up all night long so Literally. you had to check in by a certain time that's i know like a lot of listen i went from parole listen i went on the avenue real quick with the metro pcs brought me a couple of pair of jeans and vim and within my budget and i hopped on the train and got there before my deadline was it was it was it scary like what it was, was it nasty. it was it nasty was just, because i know marissa just, says that that it's not like it was then what was it like then because this is your you, story it was it was, it was it was first of all, it was filthy, um, and it was just wild. Like, yo, imagine <laughs> just wildness. You know, fights, drug transactions, folks getting high. You know, one thing. You know, all this happened in the system, but you know, you had officers that would come and be. You know what I mean? And folks were scattered. No, this was a total. This was like this was the block. I know how yeah, the, the block. Yeah, I know how the shelter was there on on in Brooklyn off of Bedford in Atlantic, right there on the corner. That it's shelter was yet. horrible. Like they used to come outside to, to you know, to wipe your little windows or you know, make a little money, yeah, but they exactly. were stinking. Yeah. They, you know, they it's weren't just, smelling too good, and and yeah. I just knew how they looked going in there. So thankfully, thankfully, I only stayed in Bellevue's men's shelter one night, um, and then from there, I went. They moved me to a shelter in Brooklyn, but it was right on the other side of Queens, Long Island City, and I stayed there two weeks, but. That was crazy. I listen, police running up in there every night. It was just, it was wow. insane. It was insane. So, um, Andre what's up, Dave said, Q? And, Andre said, incarcerated people slash individuals, oh, wow. felons, ex cons, inmates, all are offensive to the population. How you feel about that? Like, did you feel like that you, when you got out, that was what how people saw you? You weren't you were offensive to them. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you, yo. Yeah. I went to church one Sunday. Uh -huh. And I didn't have the clothes. You know, I just came out. Uh, I was wearing a homeboy's clothes. It was like he was wow. like four sizes bigger than me. Um, and I just like I'd been to this church before, and um, so they knew my my testimony and story. However, so when I went and sat down on a pew, a woman had her pocketbook there. Well, and it wasn't like nowhere near, but she saw me and she picked her pocketbook up and hugged it, and then put it on the other side of it. Wow. How often did you did you face things like that? <laughs> All the time. Love you I too, Dave Q. Still, I can still tell you some stuff I face today. Still, after eight years, and was, eight and a half years, yeah, eight and a half years being outside. So, so, so let yeah. me let me wow. ask you this question, uh, Professor. You're outside now. Now you're outside. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're in the you're in, you're in the regular society. You society. came now, now just to know where you are now and coming from the shelter, you are now in a place where, where, where I'm amazed because, you know, I've come back and forth to Brooklyn and I've seen, you know, you're driving a nice car, you got your own place now, you know, and, you, and you're pretty much working every other day that I see you, you in films, you in movies, 
you you in sitcoms, you're getting interviews, you got a book out, you got a book out. So it's like now you it's like you I, I kinda in my, I'm sitting here in admiration of you because right. understanding the stigma that was put on you and what you had to deal with, but you made it your business to not be a statistic coming out. What was that like? I mean, I guess I really already conditioned myself because I already had conditioned myself in the system not to be a byproduct. What happens is um, everybody becomes a byproduct to fit in. And, you know, for different reasons, protections, so yeah. lack of identity, low self-esteem, you know, everybody's a blood, everybody's a crib, everybody's a king or Muslim, you know, the list goes on, yeah. you know. Um, so I guess I conditioned myself already in there for that, not knowing that I was going to need that when I stepped outside as well. Not knowing. Wow. wow. Dave Q said, man, you a miracle. He said, what you had to go through and where you are today, your story is a, a miracle story. This is why we definitely bring you back on, man, because it's about letting people know that in the midst of you feeling that you will not make it, you know what I'm saying? God, God has, it, it's really God has the, the last say, the final say. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it may seem. And I don't even care if certain things that you may apply for and get denied. I don't believe you're getting the denied because of your record. I believe you're getting denied because this is God he's, steering you yeah, in a whole other direction. Because, because you, 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 you not, you're not lacking like 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 someone who would not know what to do right. if they were in the situation that you were in. Listen, I have to read what Adrian Hampton wrote. These people love you, Mr. Barry Austin. The the love that I see, I can't even take my eyes off the the um comments. He says, "I'm all for you do the crime, you do the time." But Barry's situation is very unique, and he was put in a situation that caused him to do unthinkable, the unthinkable, just so he could be free. I admire his strength. I mean this sincerely with hearts and 100% and all of this stuff. The, there, because, you know, you don't really know the person. And a lot of times when you get, when, when you see people and you hear that they were in prison for whatever the case, it's almost as if we have a judgment up front already without getting to know that person, unless you probably knew that person before and you know the situation. <clears throat> so I can imagine that you've come face to face with a lot of that. And you made a statement. You said you weren't prepared. You said, I wish I was prepared for what was going to happen when I came out. So for somebody that's watching, Somebody who may have a loved one that's in right now about to come out or someone who hopefully get we, this gets to the prison and someone is about to get out and they, they need to hear what you wish you heard. What would you tell them? Listen, I would tell them to learn all they can. I would tell them, contact me, contact Andre Aparicio, individuals that are experts in this area to show what's needed, the support that's needed. Um, sometimes people think that, okay, because I give you a couple of dollars, I'm supporting you, but it, it's more than that. You know, um, or I give you, I give you an outfit, the webcast may be, it's more than that. You know, um, the fact, one of the things, and I'll say this, I, you know, I did a lot of ministry when I was behind the wall. I mean, so like I preached on a regular, wherever I was at, you know, um, so coming, coming out, like I was, I was received in there in such a way and reverence. And I'm coming out here and, and it's like, what am I going to do? And the folks Spiritual don't want to hear shock. me. Folks don't even know me. I don't even know you out there that I'm saying. Wow. The folks are going, I'm coming from prison. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, it was a lot to deal with. And a, a lot of the, the support that I needed and emotional support, I just didn't have. Wow. I, I want to ask you a question. And I'm curious about this. Why you were in, I'm really curious about this. How many times did the church come inside to, to, to support and show support. How many times did that happen? Oh my gosh. Uh, so Mars on here. When I tell you, it was unreal. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, shout out to Donnie McKirkland. Donnie came in and did a service for me. Um, okay. BB Winans came in and did a service for me. The late, great Timothy Wright came in on several occasions and, you know, did services. Um, shout out to Atlantic Star, the old pop group Atlantic Star for always and secret lovers. They're saved now. They came in and did numerous service for me. Like I said, you know, um, 
And then we not even we won't even discuss the local churches and stuff like that. So I mean, it's just it was an influx. It, it was never a dull moment when it came to ministry. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you really had this support. So Myra That's Miller awesome. said, God has his hands on Barry inside those walls and continues to have. Okay, so listen, we usually, especially today, we hear a lot of negative press about the church. So we is no way we're gonna scave past that. That easy, it just goes to the next thing. You just sat here and said all of these churches, all of these people, some of which who have big names, came into the prison, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. And basically gave the gift that God gave them to minister to people, to help. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it aided you in in just feeling loved as well. We can't just pass that over because y'all is still people out here who love God and love his work and will do what God has called them to do. Even if it means now I ain't going to front. I I don't know how, I don't think prison is my ministry (laughs) because I get nervous just thinking about your story. I think I'd I'd rather probably go under the bridge and pass out some food and sing to them or or talk to them about God. I'm, I'm, I'm not as afraid, I have to be honest. But they came. These people supported. That's okay, so that was my soapbox. We can move on now. <laughs> Let me just say this. And and I respect what you said, but prison ministry does not just detail going into the prison. Okay. You can you can support somebody else going in. You know what I mean? You can um send tracks, literature, you know what I'm saying? There's so much more than just coming in you know for a service and you know there is it that's just one aspect of prison ministry so so would you think would you say you got more support from the church while you were in there as opposed to being oh, out that's a good question indubitably wow wait wait now wait indubitably you got more <laughs> support, support inside in or indubitably? inside inside, inside. inside. Do you think that's because we know that that's a part of the mission that God gave us to go, you know, or, or I mean, well, why do you think that? Because your story, say that. because hit your story to, is greater coming out of it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Your story is a little greater coming out of it. You know, you made it out of a, a situation. Right. But see, well, again, like I said, folks see the glory but they don't understand the story. That's they don't what understand. I'm trying to get, the story. They don't understand. And I definitely had more support from, you know, the churches where I was in than when I was out. And even, and, and, and one thing, you know, I'm going to tell the truth and shame and devil, even some of them same individuals that supported while I was in there, when I got out, they no were the that's why I, that See, and that's what the, the thought came to my mind. Do you think it's because we know that that's part of, that that's that's what you're supposed to do as a church. You're supposed to help those who are inside. You know, you, do you think that's part of it? Because we just I mean, know I, that that's the thing to do. I can't even, I can't even put, it's so far for me to even comprehend because if you know, you know. And I don't see how you was... I not understand everybody's not gonna understand in, in totality. Yeah. But if you're seeing somebody that was incarcerated for 15 years and doing what they were doing and you were supporting their ministry and stuff like that, and you see them step out after all this time, you gotta understand even I, maybe, I can't maybe because you're I, too close to me now. Maybe now I have to actually have a relationship with you now, a real one. Can, can y'all go and, back to we got a good question on here that, that ties in Tanisha which one was Wells. This? Tanisha, Tanisha Walls. I've been looking Walls? at Tanisha's comment. Yeah, go back. Okay, it says, what were some ways you expected or needed support or desired supported support that can encourage believers on the outside to look in? Oh, that was I'm going to tell you. So when I, 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 I can bring up so many different examples. One of the things when I came out, um, it spread like wildflower. wildflower uh, wildfire. Fire. Mm-hmm. Folks wanted me to preach here. They wanted me to get my testimony here and stuff like that. So, um, and I was at a church. Uh, so I got a call one day. Uh, somebody wanted me to come in and preach a minister. And uh, they said, well, what's your honorarium? I said, what? They said, what's your honorarium? 
I said, oh, I said, let me call you back. I didn't know what an honorarium was. Wow. You know, this wasn't sat down and did, you know what I'm saying? You know, I even at the church I was at, like I said, I'm just coming home. Nobody was allowed to go with me. Because probably when you, know, you went in, people was going to churches and stuff just because God told them to go and they had a word. You didn't know about an honorarium. Go back to Marcus's know. statement. Marcus, yeah, yeah I, I was looking at it. Um, Marcus says maybe the church see going in as the mission, as free stated, but, oh, free, that's me, as free stated, you know. but supporting someone on the outside requires a deeper commitment. Marcus, I was there it with does, you. It does, but do, do, duly note that to me, that is the responsibility of the church, a commitment. That's what's missing, people. Go that, ahead, baby. That, that is a, I believe that that is the responsibility of the church. And that's what happens is we, we categorize our commitments as, as opposed to it being easier when doing ministry covers the whole thing, well, inside you, and well, out. Can, can I address something? Come Adrian on. Come on. Said, me, Adrian. Adrian said, what I admire about Barry Austin Ray is that you never gave up on the church after you were free. Let uh -huh. me just say this, Adrian. Uh, it was, it probably, it was easier for me to give up on the church when I got outside than it was on the inside. Wow. Okay, talk about that. Because again, um, some of the stuff, the treatments that I got wasn't cool. You know what I mean? Um, I, I shared this with Jesse one time. I was sitting in a service, you know, um, I'm fresh out, you know, wearing other people's clothes, had no money in my pocket. And the preacher said, you know, she, she had preached. She was getting ready to take up an offering. She said, you know, you shouldn't even come to church if you don't have an offering. Oh. Oh. And my, my, my. can you imagine yeah, how that made me feel? You know what I mean? Or, and I thought about somebody that wasn't as really grounded. Yeah. That would have been in there. And, they, you know what I'm saying? It would have sent them out the door and made them never come back. It was so, you know, I can remember, you know, the church is talking about we're going to feed the community. And I'm sitting there starving. Can't tell my stomach from my back. And they know. Wow. But you know what's so crazy? It's, it's so crazy because that is so true. We we there be people inside of the church that are hurting, that come to church and don't even know how they're gonna get home. But they'll take up an offering to give to the people that's poor in the streets, or they'll do uh feed the homeless or feed the hungry, but they don't even understand that there are some people who come to church and won't even because they're prideful. Well, not saying that that helps, but the point is, this is about understanding and having a relationship because what we have done in the church, we have replaced relationship with religion. And because religion has take, taken so much of precedence in the church until we don't build relationships with people in the church. So we really don't even know what people are going through in the church. Some people come to church broken down, no money, no, 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 no food in their house. And you make them feel bad about the, the very little that they have, that they have to give that. And, and the responsibility is like I said, to understand about the relationship. The and, relationship. And, and 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 this is not to say. And this is not the bash the church. The whole church. Like every single no, church. No, That's not no, what I'm not saying. saying. But I believe that it is time to be honest now. You know, because mm -hmm. people are really hurting. And, the, and I remember that season we went through with church hurt. Everybody was going to church. But, and then, you know, after a while, people was like, I'm so sick of hearing people talk about church hurt, but it is real. It's real. It's real. So for those out there who are doing the work, and I like how, who is this here? Um, one of the comments, um, David, he said the church is supposed to show that they're doing the work, but the real work, all caps, comes when no one is looking. And that's where the relationship come from, Barry. Wow. It's, it's sad to say that a lot of times, and I was one. I've been not not in your situation, but I've been in the church, working in the choir, the youth leader, all of this in the same church at the same time, and was homeless, and nobody knew. Nobody. Well, some people, people, some people, they didn't don't know. know. But it wasn't that they cared enough. To, to that's right, Marcus. Make sure you know I did have one person to help me, but you know it was like all of these people that knew my situation, but nobody cared enough to 
do the work when no one was looking as far as um, what, what was spoken on the, um, the comment. So I think that that's what we need to get back to because I remember going to church when I was growing up. We called uncle, aunt, that's right. um, sister, brother, people that didn't even have our blood. We, we became like family. And when somebody couldn't even make it to church, I remember they used to take the, the communion to their house and have a little meeting with them for about 15 minutes and have communion with them and show them that we missed you today. And, and so since you couldn't come to us, we, we're going to come to you. You know, it used to be that way. So for you to get out, people think it's easier sometimes out here, but we need to wake up. We really need to wake up because if we really truly get the scales off our eyes and God show us what he sees that's really going on, we would cry. We would do like you did when you saw the, when y'all took that wrong turn and you saw your city for the first time after again, we would cry because this world has gotten to that point. And let me say this. I, there's hundreds of men that I've known that have come home after doing extensive amount of time and no support, not, not having people around and help them acclimate and become a productive member of society and gone right back. So it was easier there. And yeah. that breaks my heart because yeah. again, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and especially, you know, for like those who when I was coming out behind me and I wasn't in a position to help them, but seeing them talk about they going back because it's easier in there. Like, Oh, there was a comment. God help. She said, uh, no, now knowing what we know about the church, do we think that they are real or is fake? I, 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 it, I, I don't think, um, you want to answer that Barry? Yeah. So knowing what you know about the church, do it make you wonder are church folks, folks for real, real or, or just, just for show, show or just for now, show? You got to, I think you got to kind of separate, you got to kind of separate church to. people yeah. as opposed to who are running the church. Cause there's a, there's a difference in, in, in power and there's a difference in influence and there's a difference in mindset because church people or people who go to, let's say people who go to church, these are people who are really looking for help. Right. They're hungry for the help. They're hungry for Jesus. They're hungry. And that's what we understand where the help comes from. Yeah. From the Come Lord. Now. But let me say this, you know, church folks and kingdom folks are two different things. Yeah, right. that's true too. That's okay. true too. From a whole nother perspective. Great. Marissa, girl, you blessed me. Come on, keep elaborating. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, um, church folks and, and kingdom folks is, is different. Church folk come to church, you, you know, want to be seen with kids, but kingdom folks that want to build God's kingdom, they're going to get all in. You know what I mean? They're all in. So yeah. at the end of the day, it's a different, it's a different mentality. It's a different, a different set of commitment, you know, right. where there's no commitment, you know, and no, I, you know, you, you have to separate, even like when we was on here, um, when I was on a couple of weeks ago and we talked about what I went through and what led up to this, had I had not been able to separate the two, I couldn't have sat under another pastor, especially a male pastor. Yeah. Right. You dig right. what I'm saying? Yeah. You look at everybody the same. And yeah, and you can't do that, right? But I, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want people to look at me the same. Come on. Yeah, that's true. And, yeah. and, and, go ahead, I'm sorry. Marissa, I have to say her comment. I love your comment, Marissa. Is it Marissa or Marisa? Marissa. Marissa. Marissa says, so all this proves is that it was God and not the church. Exactly. Exactly. That's all this proves. Exactly. So we could go into, was it the church? Are they fake? Or You know what? To, to be honest, I believe that people do what they saw. I believe that a lot of people, they, they, they do what they know to Come do. Come on, Crystal. I believe that it's not fake for them to That's do right. what they know to do. But when you hear things like this, when you have real talk, when people, the people are talking That's now. That's right. The people are speaking. You have to be able to open your ears now as leadership in the church and say, okay, we need to figure out what it is that we can do different now. Shift. We have mm. to shift our perspective and shift our mindset because everybody can't be wrong. I just, I just know 
There's a lot of great comedy Turk folk but That's right That's a that's another You're right uh, Samara That's a whole nother topic And we're going to We're going to tackle that Church folk versus kingdom folk but Okay the Can whole, I, can I yeah. segue just a little bit Keep your thought Marisa Marissa um, We need you to contact us After the show Okay Because we were told That you have A story of your own That we may want to yes, hear yes. So yes, make yes. sure Marisa, Marissa Come on Dave can Marissa you? Okay. Oh wait, okay. wait, wait! Because we got Dave Q. This is I was. This is what I'm about to go. Dave took it right out my mouth. Come on, Dave. Dave said this should this should be said. Some churches aren't the church that's called. The community is the church's first help. Kingdom mm-hmm. building is all about uplifting the people and dismantling the problems. Uplifting the people and dismantling the problems. What well, I know, I'm not even gonna say no names. I I used to play for this church in Brooklyn. Oh Lord, you done narrowed it down to the. I used to play for this church in Brooklyn. <laughs> everybody know who you talking about now. Everybody no, no, knows. everybody don't know because it was a lot of churches that I played for okay, in Brooklyn. Okay, it was a lot of churches, <laughs> but this church was in an area. It was in an area that really needed the church to go into the projects, and I asked the pastor. I said, "Why do the policemen go into the apartments and the and the the housing development?" We'll just say that for. For, for I don't you know be on the wrong thing I'm saying and why do the police go in the uh housing developments more than the church because mm-hmm. again these were housing developments that have a lot of drugs have a lot of crime have a you lot said, of hurt why do the policemen why do the police yes the police go in there more than the church do oh okay then the church then do. the church okay, go gotcha. in there gotcha. they, these are souls these are souls that need God. And you don't never how first of all, I believe every seed planted grows. I don't care if it's a little seed that you plant, but if you plant that seed, it's gonna grow. Absolutely. But we so busy worrying about seeds being planted in the church until we don't go out and plant no seeds. Now listen, Miss Brenda, I I'm got sorry. you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right Elder. Here. I'm sorry, Apostle. No, I love this show because <laughs> this this is the come on now. Um, Miss Brenda, she says. So do knowing what you know now, does it make you question your faith, especially about the church? No, no, not at all. Not Absolutely at all. Okay. not. Come it on, Mary. Make me, it doesn't make me question my faith um, because I know where my faith lies and my faith doesn't lie in the church. That's right. Come That's on, right. talk Come on. about it. And the reality is when it comes to the church building and, and the people in the church, uh-huh. I know what's it. I know what I know now what to expect and what not to expect. Mm-hmm. And right. that knowing is the battle. One, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes our expectations get us hurt because we have such expectations for people and entities and stuff like that. And then we get let down or we don't get the support uh-huh. or the love that we need and then we're broken. But right. I know what to ex- I, I I I know what to expect. I know what not to expect. Right. So I, I can't be offended on that area, but has it questioned my faith in God and been, absolutely not. It's only mm-hmm. enhanced it and strengthened it. That's come right. on, that's come the on. way it's supposed to go. Erica, because I got you right day, here. Uh-huh, go ahead. Come on, come on, Bishop. Go ahead, come Barry. On. You're talking, you're I, couldn't depend, I couldn't depend on nobody else. It's my God. faith in whom I believe. That's right. And who that's kept right. me 22 years and nine months that kept me going. Yeah. And you also know this too. It also says that you know the tree by the, the fruit, fruit it that bears, it bears. Baby. So if you're bearing fruit, it's only coming from the tree. <laughs> No, let me say this. Let me just say this. Okay, come because, on. And, and, and see, I, I, you, I don't even care. What happens is a lot of times we the fruit is there, but because of where you've been, folks won't look at the fruit, but look at where you've been. Oh, unfortunately. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? The fruit is there. Yeah. Integrity is there. Trustworthiness uh-huh. is there. You know what I'm saying? The heart of people is there. Wow. But let come something on. come, they're going to result back to where you've been. It can be an innocent mistake. It can be, you know, an error, you know what I'm saying? A, a mix of what case me. They're going to result back to where you've been rather than the fruit. Wow. But wouldn't wow. that still come from, because again, I believe it is what's being taught. You know what I'm saying? Because for the only reason why you reflect to even that, that level of, of, of ministry is what you're being taught. It comes I'm gonna from. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Uh, if you remember Jonah, 
he had to go preach to Nineveh. When mm -hmm. you study Jonah, his, 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 his forefathers was uh, 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 oppressed by Nineveh. Oppressed and by Nineveh them, was, right. And, and, and they were some evil people. The book of Nahum, second and third chapter, they was evil, yep. uh, cruelty and war, evil plots against God. So I understand him not wanting to go preach yeah. to these people. Come on. But he preached to them. He went and preached to them after he came out the fish. You know what I mean? Didn't believe that they was going to you know, repent, but they did. He got angry that God spared them. What happens is a lot of times, and it's, it's a sad thing in the church, we don't believe that people can be redeemed unless until it comes to our own house or our own family, somebody that we close to that we got love for. It can't happen. They can't get be redeemed to be fully restored, but my son and my daughter can. My yeah. niece and my y'all hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why it's up to each individual to take to play their part in this. And um, let me read what Erica wrote. Erica, she says, it's so depressing being raised in the old school church and now be an adult giving God all the praise and using the gifts he has blessed you with to be used and abused by those looking for quantity and not quality. Mm, wow. Wow. Listen, wow. Erica. This is what's you, you, you talking right, Reverend. I promise you, you are. But I get what we we talking. We just trying to keep it real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because this is what happens. They're being a lot. Because again, a lot of the today's people, they're coming like this, arms open. I, I'm looking for the way, and the way that's being showed is give, 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 give. And the only concern is as long as you're giving, whether it's your money, whether it's your time, whether it's your, 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 your emotions, whether it's everything you have give to this ministry. But the concern is not what I give to you so that you can go out and bring them in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And again, we're not talking about every church. We're not talking about every church, but we're just but being then, real here. We're going to only real. be real. We right. just only, I can only be real because I, I, I experienced we it. All, I mean, so many of us from have. both sides of the spectrum. I've experienced it. The only concern. And again, cause I've, I dealt with a church and, and I've dealt with another church. The, the same thing. I mean, I, they were only concerned about me being the musician at the church. They didn't know what I was going through. As long as I was on my post at the time I was supposed to be there, that was their only concern. And it wasn't just the tree. It was the fruit. But it was because of what the, the tree was saying. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and I guarantee you, now I'm not at their church no more. But I, and the thing is, because I, I'm about relationship. So now my relationship was only, and it, and this is shown, this relationship was only a relationship as long as I was at that church. Giving your gift. Mm. Giving my gift. I ain't at that church no more, and I don't even talk to none of the people no more. Listen, um, Bishop Barry, you outside for real now. This is what <laughs> happens when you come when you outside. outside. This is this. Wow. Come on, Crystal. You got to read. Crystal is saying some good stuff. You know, Crystal, Crystal Flowers. She, she she's has, she's she saying has some good to stuff. Be a woman of God. She must be oh, a yes, woman of is. God. Because yes. she is saying some good stuff. One thing for certain, and I, I read this one. That's why I was smiling, Crystal. You had me smiling. See, she says one thing for certain and two things for sure. When you can go. And plant seeds where no one else is willing to go. Those trees will grow deep and strong mm -hmm. because of the untouched Touch fertile, fertile soil, soil baby. My point exactly. Crystal, Come on, prophetess, Halle, flowers, Luya, Hallelujah. Bishop, keeping it real is about yes. the true deliverance. I'm sorry, baby. That this is David. Then the then the heart of God will push you into leading the right way. We all know. Yes, come on, Q. And seen them all. Let me tell y'all. Come on, Dave Q. Bishop, we're going to have to anoint David to, to and install him as <laughs> come the on. pastor of the uh, Red this Hook Baptist Church of Crown Heights <laughs> Church on the Hill. <laughs> this is what happens when you come outside. And, and especially one thing that Jesse and I used to say, when you come and we talk real talk, everybody doesn't have to agree. But we all have to respect each other's opinions. This is real talk. And the thing that's happening here is I feel people are getting free. People are finally able to say what has been on their hearts. Yes, yes. And that's what happened. And, and to see it coming from outside. you, 
Rev, I want to ask you a question, quick question, Rev. Um, but like I said, you know, because we have to get to because what? we're outside now. Yeah, we're, we have we're to outside. Get to, yeah, because the topic for today we're is I'm outside. Get now, to the I just I just want you to say tell someone or or the people that are listening and even people who really don't understand about prison ministry, being outside. What are some of the things that you can encourage? people who are on the inside trying to come outside or we you know what to expect or you know the, tell us your version of what outside is to you i mean and one of the things i'm gonna answer your question one of the things you talked about opinion and one of the things is i'm not giving the opinion i'm telling you what i experienced so come if on, anybody gets upset with that, you know i'm just telling you what i experienced and what story. i had to do right you know um so being outside it for me Again, it was, dude, let me just say this. I had, I'm a worker. I've always been. I, I have no problem, you know, rolling my sleeves working. But um, there were days I got up and went out searching after every door being shut in my face the day before. Mm. Um, and coming home to an empty place and having to deal with that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Um no one to empathize or even like to pour into me that to understand that, you know, it's going, it, it will get better. Um, or getting hired on jobs, knowing that I was on parole mm-hmm. and would abuse me and use me because they knew I needed it. You know what I mean? I needed, uh, I needed the paycheck. Uh, um, or working a job and getting, getting jobs and doing stellar work, doing above and beyond, um, only to be fired after the extensive background check came in. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, um, and finding that in everything, even to this day, I find that I have to go above and beyond. I have to do harder. I have to work harder. I have to be a standout. I have to be stellar because sometimes it's unfortunate. Even after eight and a half years, you'll still be judged. You still won't be dealt the hand of a productive member of society or being exonerated or, or your past being expunged. No, mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's not the case. So just understanding that, you know, the, the support you know, the unadulterated, unapologetic support sometimes means everything. Then, you yeah. know, you giving five or ten dollars, whatever the case may be. It it because when I tell you they were days, they were days. I know what it is to walk miles from Brooklyn to Queens because I didn't have 275 to put on my metro car. Mm-hmm. You know, walking across the bridge from Manhattan back into Brooklyn because I didn't have 275 on my metro car. Dude, I know and the days where it's just like, yo. My body and, and mind just was like, you know, just give up. Like, dude, like, what's the use? Like, you know, um, it was rough. It was rough. And even triggers, you know, stuff that people would do or say that, you know, sometimes would trigger you. It, it, <laughs> uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy being outside. I wasn't prepared for being outside. Um, and that's why I do what I do, because I don't ever want somebody to have to go through what I went through. And it'd be as hard as it had to be when I, you know, stepped out. Um, I, I, I just want you to know this, man. One thing I know, uh, one thing I know about you, man, you know, because we, we've been friends for a long time. And um, one thing I could say is that I never looked at what you've been through because I know who you are. And and because I know who you are, I know what your life entails. You are a giver. You mm-hmm. are ministry. Mm-hmm. And 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 that's one thing God knows about us. He knows who we are. So because he knows who we are, he'll put us in situations to help bring other folk out. He'll put us in situations to 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 even make us stronger than we already believe that that we believe that that more than we would believe that we already are. Yeah. So because I know you, I know you a ministry, man. You walk it, you talk it. That is your life. I mean, you walk around in suits and go into the store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but that's because God has really brought uh, raised you up for such a time as this. Because people need real they need the real life. They need the real story. That's right. They need the real truth. They need to know how did you come from 
first of all, your story started with you were angry as a little kid and no one saw your pain because you were being molested by a man of God in the church. That should have turned you against God right there, but it didn't. Then you even, I rem remember, if you haven't seen the last episode, y'all, go look at the last episode with Barry Austin. Um, I thought my life was over. That's the title. Because you talked about how when you got caught and you were sitting in Central Booking, that was the first time you felt free. Then you talked about how you were in prison and, and how they put you out, basically. After you mm -hmm. had been sentenced to 15 years, they gave you 20 how many? 22 years and nine months. You served 22 years and nine months. And then at some point, they the, the officers came and said, we got to get you out of here. And they gave their reason for it. I'm not going to go into that because I might get it wrong. And then from there, you outside. You in a shelter. Then you went from, you. It, it was almost like how people say when it rains, it pours. It was one hit after another hit after another hit. Bishop, I was looking for you. But right now, artist, actor, producer, singer, man of God, for real. See, what God is doing is he's saying there's a remnant of you that I need y'all to go through these things. I need you to go through because you're going to be the Bible walking that people not going to ever read. They're going to read your life. It's too many of us out here playing. Like you said, you playing. It's too many people in the, in the body of believers who are out here playing. So God is going to take some of us through some things. And then he's going to bring us out. And when he brings us out, the, the love for his work is going to be so genuine that we're going to be able to do things that everybody else may be playing around with. But you're going to do it for real. Go, Bishop go, Butler. Go back to Bishop Butler's uh, comment, y'all. And I was about to say Bishop Butler had to go through what he went through. And now marriage ministry for he him is real. That's what he God said, is doing. He's, for our light affliction, uh -huh. which is but for a moment. But for a moment. Worketh for us yeah. far more exceeding and internal weight of God worketh for glory us. our employee and it was only for a moment and although you went through my prayer for you is Lord don't let Barry waste unmatched that's right everything he went through Leah allow him to know the lesson that you took him through that for so he can go and help somebody else because that's what it's all about now that you outside and you doing his work, people know it's real. That's why you got so much love on this feed. Because people know that it's real. We don't want to take up our cross because it hurts. We don't want to take up our cross because it will bring up feelings and triggers from our childhood or whatever the case. But what God is saying right. is if you take up your cross and follow me, you can't go wrong when you're following in my footsteps. It will hurt, yes. But when I bring you out, and when I take you to it and bring you through it and then bring you out, you're going to have some people that I'm going to draw to you That's because right, you're going to lift me up. That's right, Crystal. And we appreciate you for that. We honor you for that. Marissa said you should have gave up a long time ago. Somebody on here said you should have lost your mind or, or you still have your right mind. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Bring back testimony. That's right, to Crystal. She said, bring back testimony. It will help somebody. These young people don't know how to cope. It's the difference between overcoming and, and suicide. suicide. That's right. That's we we didn't we didn't put a we didn't put a a, 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 a a psychological name on not knowing how to cope. And we call it mental health. And we it's call it, real. We call it mental health. Just but like the point physical is, health. Right. It's the point real. Is, there's just so much that that's more, so much more required of us as as a as a body of Christ, as a body. You know what I'm saying? There's there's so much more required of us, and I believe, man, this is just the start of of what's greater for you, man. And what's coming is better. Talk. We'll be supporting you every step of the way. If, if, if you if you if you like what you heard today, y'all, please like and share, like and share it, like and share it. Man, the support is brother Barry. You got a book coming out, and you were showing us about a book earlier. You want to um, talk on that real quick before we? Yes. Um, my brother. Well, you need to 
link with Andre as well. Andre Aparicio. Uh, what is my MSP. Up? Yeah, um, he put this book out. Andre is another one who uh, was incarcerated, came out, and wow. has been an advocate for individuals coming out and helping them reacclimate and become productive members of society. He's been mediators okay. between you know, prisoners and parole officers, mm -hmm. you know, um, in the forefront of, you know, getting individuals jobs and the whole nine. So we've been in this, Amen. in this, we've been on this uh, journey together for eight years, you know, and still pushing forward. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. so yeah. Lisa, Leah, I have to say this real quick and I know we run out of time. Yes, Leah said, you. I've never said this before, but I used to look forward to your calls because I knew you were still pushing through and I seen mm. the smile on my dad's face. Period. Uh, we are, we, y'all listen. Oh my God. Bishop, we love you, Bishop. Two, part three. I mean, it's never Bishop ending. Butler, God bless you, sir. Bless you. Oh yeah, we love, we we definitely are supporting Bishop Butler and his ministry as oh, well. Oh yes, listen, man. Y'all listen. I'm sorry, y'all, but listen, y'all. Please, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, shift movement. Cash shift out, movement. shift movement. We got to keep just, this going, y'all. Yeah, we, we really want to keep this going. We want to keep this going. We have to keep and it we're gonna, going. And we're going to we're gonna get to the point where we're going to be able to bless these guests that's coming on. And Amen. That's, that's what we want to do. But we just, Barry, man, we thank God for you, bro. Um, we got to stop. We got to keep going. Thank you for posting Andre's information. And like I said, and please, y'all go get that choir boy. That's Barry's book yes. that he got out. The choir boy. Yeah, go get that. Come that quiet that. boy, man. And listen, we love you. We have we have Always. a we have a YouTube page, y'all. Listen, this is what we're doing. We're gonna randomly pick a subscriber, and there's a prize for that randomly picked subscriber. So go on YouTube. So go on and YouTube subscribe. and subscribe to Shift Movement. Shift Real Talk. Shift Real Talk. That's what it is. Shift, Shift Real Talk. Real Talk. You see the big ass. Do on it there. now. We Shift got, Real there, Talk. There is a great prize. I don't want. I'm going to tell you, but in the what don't it say is. What it is yet. I ain't going to say what it is yet. But if you subscribe to the channel and listen, y'all, we're going to be doing more work with Barry. We're talking and Bishop and Bishop Butler on there. Um, these ministries are going to come together, and we're going to be doing a lot more. We're going to be bringing a lot of great content for you guys. Absolutely. So listen, man, look, Barry, anything you want to say before we, before we close out? Well, thank y'all, you know, for, uh, for getting another platform of being on here. And everybody that came on, I appreciate you. Uh, Bishop, God bless you, sir. Uh, so just thank you. You know, keep me in your prayers, Doc, for real. Yes. Amen. Barry also has an entertainment company, y'all. Six in one entertainment. We have he's to sign an artist. I love it. Sign an artist, man. He bringing he bringing it, man. He bringing it. So Barry, oh, thank God for that. Check me out. Um, one of my latest on Netflix. Uh, made off the monster of Wall Street. Check me out in there. Uh, got some more stuff coming. Come so, on. You know, man, All this right, guy. God? I'm telling you, this guy's doing. He about to do. Listen, this man. Commercials. Commercials. I'm gonna get with you on some jingles because you're gonna be doing some commercials. Amen. You're gonna be doing commercials. You better believe it. it. Yes. Thank you. All right, Thank you. So I'm and listen, y'all. Wait, we got well, we we got to give a a, a a shout out to to the people who make this podcast happen, man. I love yes, these brothers, we man. Love them. Sacred Stone Studios. Sacred Stone listen, y'all. This is the best studio in, in Houston. Houston. Texas. This is the best studio. If y'all looking to time. do. Uh, and Barry, we're going to get with you, man. We're going to start the radio station soon. I'm, uh, we're going to talk. When we're after book that. your we're after session. To book, look, look, I'm Amazing telling y'all. I'm people. telling y'all. These guys will take care of you. I promise you. If you want to do a podcast, if you want to do your sermon, you know they'll set the stage up for you, man, and, and look out for you, man. All right. So about. listen. It is now time for us to end. Portland, Oregon. We come into Portland. Love ball in Portland, Oregon. I had to say that. Go on event, bright April 29th. Portland, Oregon. April 29th. Shift Love Ball. Shift Love Ball in Portland, Come Oregon. With us. Yes. Let's go in numbers and support. Let's, let's go. I'm telling gonna you, it's going to be dope. We're it's celebrating gonna be dope. love. Barry, might have to bring you out there to tell your we story, man. We're celebrating love. <laughs> All right, so it's time to pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you forever, for always. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for the people that have come. Bless their homes. Bless them in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Like and share, y'all. Listen, we love you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for supporting. So thank y'all. Thank y'all, man. Barry, thank you, man. Until next thank Tuesday. You. Shift Real Talk. Peace. 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 Peace.